it's been a while since I just like talked to the camera. Definitely gets easier the more that you actually do it. Every day lately I've been getting up, looking at the death tolls and all this stuff, all the bad stuff going on in the world. And there's so many people out there doing such good things. All the medical care people like sacrificing their own well-being to care for people and try to save their lives. All the people like truck drivers delivering food so we can continue to actually feed our families and things like that. And I was trying to think of things that maybe I could do. I'm not a doctor, I'm not anything like that. I've recently not lost my job, but my regular job you could say is laid off at the moment with all everything going on which is a good call on their part I'm very thankful that they're actually taking our safety in consideration but along with that all the photo and video type stuff that's kind of slowed down come to a halt all the gatherings weddings all that stuff have been canceled so now I actually have a little bit of time to make this and so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing this I've wanted to do it for a long time and it seems like something I can do to put a little bit of good in the world, maybe spread some knowledge. This is not gonna be anything crazy, especially starting off. I'm gonna start with pretty basic level things, things that I think I could provide value on for the people watching. This will probably be good for beginners. If you get into intermediate or advanced people, you're probably already gonna know most of what I'm gonna be talking about in these videos, especially early on, so you're more than welcome to stick around. I just wanna start making a little sort of creative community of people who will actually be there for each other and try to actually help each other and not like see everything as a competition but actually work together to better everyone. That's my goal with this. So having said that, we're gonna jump into the computer. I'm gonna show you one little trick that I've done recently on a photo shoot to uh, just enhance the photos a little bit, make what would normally be sort of a boring-ish photo and make it just pop just a tiny bit. So we're gonna hop to the computer and I'll show you how it's done. So today I wanted to talk about something very small that can be used to make a somewhat boring-ish, like plain looking photo, add that little bit of crispiness on top. So we're gonna be taking this photo and turning it into this photo. I've always loved those little light leaks, that sort of like anamorphic lens type flare thing, which don't get me wrong, can totally, totally be overdone. And for these photos, it might be overdone, but it adds a little bit of something and it's something I could show you guys. Today I'm working with Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. You could probably do this with any other software that you can manipulate photos with. I've got a few friends that are photographers that use some other programs and they say it pretty much correlates. Your settings or whatever might not be exactly the same name, but you can probably do the same thing. So this was a shoot I did recently and the kid really likes his car and it's a really awesome car. So we featured that. I wanted to make a simple sort of photo. We set this up in a parking lot. There were some people back in the background and there were some other sorts of stuff. So I decided to get pretty low to the ground shooting it. Like I went into the shoot wanting to get a photo like this. And it's like one of my favorites from the shoot. I like that behind him is just pretty plain. Like the sky was really overcast that day. So it was really good for like soft lighting. Not the best for like really, really cool car photos, but I knew that I could enhance it in post with something like this, like a nice little touch on there that would make it an, an actually really cool photo. So I got pretty close to him. I was shooting with a 16 millimeter and shot like from the side angle of the car and I knew I could get that lens flare across the bottom in post. I'll show you how to do that if you wanna do photos of cars. It can really make them pop. It can definitely be overdone like I said, but it's just something to maybe think about the next time you shoot a photo with a car in it. So I was editing the photo. I got all the tones, all the colors and everything that I wanted in the photo itself. This is the original photo. This is the edited version. If you're in Lightroom, you right click on the photo down here in your little roll and go up to edit in and then Adobe Photoshop. Click that and it'll open that photo in Photoshop and you can kind of manipulate the photo a little bit farther. I can't tell you to Google light leaks or anamorphic lens flares, but that's what I did. Click images and it brings you to a page like this. It doesn't really matter what one you choose, just pick one you think looks cool that has a real bright spot and then kind of the light leaking off the sides. You can look through those, pick out a couple you like, save them to your computer, move on to adding it to your photo. Opening up that in Photoshop, this is the one we have to work with. It's a nice little PNG file, so you can move that anywhere. It doesn't have like a black background you gotta get rid of or anything, so that's good to work with. So we're gonna drag that 
straight on top of our other photo. All right, so we have that here. It kind of looks like poop, just kind of sitting there. Make sure that that layer is selected. Then you're gonna go to edit, transform, scale, and you're gonna scale this up to where you want it to be. I want it to go out across the right over his, his leg as it comes down there and extend out the left side of the frame there a little bit. You don't wanna to go too overboard with this. You can get out of hand real fast when it comes to lens flares and light leaks and stuff like that. So you wanna keep it under control a little bit. We're gonna have a little fun with it today, but you just gotta keep in mind, unless you're going for that super hyper realistic photo feel. Tweak it to your taste, but this is what I'm gonna do. Put it about there. You wanna put the center, the brightest point of the light leak, in the center of the headlight. And whenever you shoot on the day, you wanna make sure that you have the headlights on so you have that glow around them already. Check that as okay. We're gonna go over here to our blending mode. So right now what it's done is it just took that straight image and put it on top of this. That's the normal blending mode. So that image is just sitting on top of this image. Make sure the light leak is selected. Go to the blending mode. And I like the one called Linear Dodge for this. It just seems to work for me. We add that, you can see the change there. It makes it a little bit more thin of a line on the light. And then what I like to do, one thing I actually hit by accident one time, I have no clue what it actually technically does to it. It was one of those little happy accidents like Bob Ross used to talk about. Make sure that's selected, go up to edit, hit transform, and then hit again. And it like boosts the lens flare. I don't know what it does specifically. I don't know how that actually works or what it's actually doing, but I really like doing it. I don't know if you have to do it in the specific order that I did it in, but I really like the way that that looks. So this might be something after doing that, if you wanna take it that far, you could stop before then, you could take it farther than this, whatever you wanna do, it's up to you. I'm gonna go in and scale it a tiny bit because whenever you do that, it kinda makes it a little bit bigger. All right, so after we reposition it a little bit, kinda move it around, tweak it, the size to our liking after that, this is your final image. Or you can keep going with it. You can go crazy, you can do all sorts of stuff, you could change the background of this, but what I'm going for for this is the super simple, I like the negative space in this image, but I, I felt without, without this, it kind of was lacking something. So with that light leak on top of it, it gives it that like little extra pop. It kind of makes it looking at it a little bit more interesting. And I think it adds just like a nice little touch. This might be overdone for some people. This might be, you know, not as far as some people might take it, but this is just what I did for this image. You could also go in here and make sure that's selected, hit adjustments in Photoshop and hit the hue and saturation. If you want it to only affect the layer that it's on top of, you right click on that layer and hit create clipping mask. It's a little pro tip for you if you didn't know that in Photoshop. Whatever adjustments you make will only affect the light leak that is selected underneath it. It won't affect the layer of him actually sitting on the car. So you can adjust the hue here. You could drag it more towards the green or teal, orange or red or yellow. Depending on how you have color graded your actual image itself, you can kind of play around with that. But I think the original color of it works pretty well. Maybe even take it a tiny, tiny bit to the left towards a little bit more teal side. If you had different sort of tones in your actual image, you would want to mess with that hue a little bit and see if you can tame that or tweak it to where it matches everything in your image more. So here was the raw image and with color grading and everything, and then with the light leak added on. So I hope that was at least a little bit informative for you, not too drawn out and boring. This is only my first little photo tutorial type thing that I'm doing, so let me know how you liked it. Let me know anything you'd like me to try or anything you've seen that you would like me to show you how to do or any ideas you might have. Leave them in the comments down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to give the video a like if you liked the video and subscribe for more photo and video related content. I'm gonna have a lot more coming out. If you think anyone else would benefit from seeing this sort of thing, maybe they wanna try this out, you know a photographer, share this video video with them, tag them in the comments, anything like that really, really helps out. I appreciate it a whole bunch. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend a few minutes with me and learn a little bit of something. It means the world. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.